You are watching the most watched, most discussed, most entertaining Michigan football program in the world, the Michigan Football Report from Chat Sports. Ladies and gentlemen, I am your host, James Yoder, the king of Michigan football media. Follow me on Twitter. Ten Michigan football rumors for you today. Then we're going to take a look back at all Michigan starting quarterbacks going back to 1985. We're going to take a look if Shea Patterson, if Brandon Peters, if Joe Milton is named the starter, how will they fare? How does a game one starting Michigan quarterback fare throughout the career in in Ann Arbor. And then lastly, we're going to talk about a little Twitter action. Had this thing going on a couple weeks back. Who are your favorite all-time players at Michigan? We're going to start with the offense this week. I'm going to give you my offensive favorite players of all time. Ask you guys to tell me your favorite offensive players. It is Saturday. It is June 16th. And folks, we are rocking with 10 rumors. Let's get it going. Right now is Michael Barrett, incoming freshman athlete from the state of Georgia. He played running black. He played quarterback. He played wide receiver defense in college, in high school. He's coming to the University of of Michigan. People have said this is a guy that no one was talking about as a running back. Could he be Michigan's running back of the future? Well, I've got some information just in the past few days that Michael Barrett will actually be playing a slash role this fall. He may take slaps under center. He may take snaps from behind the quarterback at a running back position. He might be that role that Jim Harbaugh has used quite a bit coming on those jet sweeps, and you may see him go out in the passing game as a slot receiver. That's a three Harbaugh heads on this one, folks. I don't want to give it the full four Harbaugh head, F-A-C-K, but big time news next next week's program Michael Barrett almost assuredly will be joining us to talk about this will he be playing the slash role this fall at the University of Michigan three Harbaugh heads on that one folks on to rumor number two we have got some big time news the nation's number one running back in the country, Quaveris Couch, or Crouch, I'm sorry, is in Ann Arbor as we speak. He got into town yesterday and Friday. He's going to be here the whole weekend. This is his second time coming to the University of Michigan. Many people said it's a Clemson thing. It's a uh, it's a Tennessee thing, but Jim Harbaugh has got him to campus for the second time, so this is an F-A-C-K. He is on campus right now, the nation's number one running back. A position that Michigan has really recruited at very poorly in Jim Harbaugh's uh, time at the University of Michigan. You know, Karan Higdon uh, is doing okay, but certainly isn't the level of talent I think most people thought that Michigan would have by year four under Jim Harbaugh. Kareem Walker, we, we reported back five months ago off campus, Jim Harbaugh's biggest recruit to date. So, Will Crouch, will he come to Michigan? Can Michigan pull one of the biggest recruits, maybe the biggest offensive recruit uh, out of the south, out of the Atlantic region, get him to come to Ann Arbor? We will know more after this weekend and next week's Michigan football report. I'll be reporting how that went. And follow me on Twitter. Follow my new page on Facebook. We'll be talking about it all weekend, how Crouch's visit is going in Ann Arbor. I've got some inside sources feeding me some info on this one, so stay tuned to that. All right, on to rumor, rumor number three. Is Rich Rodriguez, Michigan's former football coach, is he helping somehow in directly uh, potentially land Michigan with the next Griffey son. Well, this is a people are talking. We're going to give this one a two Harbaugh heads, and here's why. Sean McGee, the former recruiting coordinator at the University of Arizona, worked under Rich Rod there, actually got this young man, uh, Ken Griffey Jr.'s older son, Trey Griffey, to come to Arizona, play wide receiver for the Wildcats under Rich Rodriguez. Uh, McGee left Arizona a few years back, went to Navy, spent a couple years there, then Jim Harbaugh recruited him a couple seasons ago to come to Michigan. Really, this is the second full recruiting cycle we're in right now. Griffey's, uh, Griffey's younger son is a 2020 prospect, as you see in that photo right there. Ken Griffey Sr., the first ballot Hall of Famer, uh, Major League Baseball player, all-time legend. He's pushed his sons towards football, which I actually find a little uh, a little interesting, maybe a little bit strange. His second son, a 2020 prospect, just finished his sophomore year in high school, will be a junior next year. Can Michigan get him to come up, add a little of that uh, celebrity factor in Ann Arbor? Always be cool to see a guy like Ken Griffey Jr. attending Michigan football games as a football dad. So, People are talking on that one. I think more than the, the recruits' talent, I think the uh, Ken Griffey Jr. factor is just pretty cool. Let's take a look at these Harbaugh heads, folks. People on YouTube love the Harbaugh heads, so I want to give you a quick explanation. Zero Harbaugh heads, fake news, totally false, don't believe it. One Harbaugh head, small shred of truth. Two Harbaugh heads, 50-50. There's some news out there, nothing to confirm yet. Uh, people are talking. Three Harbaugh heads, pretty likely it's trending that direction. If we give it the four Harbaugh heads, folks, that is an FAC. K fact. That's how Jim Harbaugh spells it. That is how we sell it here at Chat Sports in the Michigan Football Report. My name is James Yoder, the king of Michigan football media. I've got a question for you guys. I want you to uh, to weigh in on 
this one, go ahead and hit me in the comment section. Which coach will be at Michigan longer? Will it be Jim Harbaugh or it will be John Beeline, Michigan's you know, current basketball coach, gone to two national titles in the past five calendar years, six seasons? Will it be Jim Harbaugh? I'm not talking about in their total career. I'm talking about today going forward. Who will be the last man standing at the top of the Michigan Athletic Department? Jim Harbaugh, John Beeline. We know Beeline just a couple weeks ago flirted with the Detroit Pistons job, take two, took two meetings with Tom Gores, their owner. Jim Harbaugh has been rumored many times to want to go back to the NFL one day. Which coach will last longer? Tell us in the comments. I'm going to get in there once we're done filming here, tell you what my opinion is. I've got actually a pretty strong one on this. So go ahead and comment on that. Which coach will be at Michigan longer? Let's go ahead and take a look at rumor number four, folks. Is the defensive line, do they have a mutual goal across the four starting defensive line? Most people are actually calling Michael Dwarm for an almost lock to be a starter. Uh, do they have a goal to be the nation's best? I want to talk about this one because I think it's pretty cool. This is a four Harbaugh head, F A C K. Rashawn Gary spoke to media this past weekend, and it is on the locker of the defensive players. It is written, it is graffitied onto the Michigan football locker room inside the lockers. These guys want to be the unquestioned nation's best. A kind of another goal that wasn't really spoken about as much that I heard is they want to have at least two All Americans and three of the four uh, at least first team defensive players in the Big Ten. So big time goals for the Michigan football defense. I mean, I think this defensive line two years ago was one of the nation's best. They turn into that last year. Can they be the undisputed? You've always got teams like Alabama and, of course, Clemson this year with maybe three first-rounders, three of the maybe top 20 picks in next year's NFL draft on Clemson. So big goals for the defensive uh, line at the University of Michigan. But with Rashawn Gary coming into his junior year, with Chase Winovich returning for his senior year uh, and foregoing the NFL draft in the 2018 year, uh, I think Michigan has a really nice chance of doing that. All right. Does Rashawn Gary, speaking of Rashawn Gary, does he need a national championship? Does he need it like he needs oxygen? Well, he also told media, I just think it's a nice uh, change of tune for the Michigan football program where people have been talking about, you know, competing for Big Ten titles under Brady Hoke or wanting to beat a rival or two under, under Rich Rodriguez. Rashawn Gary said him and Devin Bush Jr. and the other 2016 recruits, many of who will be gone after this season, their third year. This could be the, probably the biggest early entry recruiting class Michigan has ever seen. These guys have a goal of a national championship. Rashawn Gary said, me and Devin Bush have been talking about it a lot. We need it. We need it so bad. I can't even talk about it. And that is a big time just you know, proclamation. It's better to have goals. It's better to want to, uh, to be at the top of your game than not. So four Harbaugh heads on that one. F-A-C-K, big time goals for the Michigan football program. Rashawn Gary putting them out there and making it public so guys like me can tell folks like you. Rumor number six, speaking of the defensive line, friend of the program, friend of Chet Sports, Mo Hurst dropped big time in the NFL draft, fifth round to the Oakland Raiders. There's, you know, concerns about a heart condition. Is he exceeding expectations? Two Harbaugh heads on this one. Haven't had a chance to talk to Mo lately, but I've seen multiple media reports that they had him pegged, the Raiders did, as a top 10 pick. There were those concerns about his health, whether or not he might be deemed never to be able to play in the NFL. But hearing that he is exceeding expectations, I don't want to give it anything more than a two Harbaugh heads just yet because we're only in OTAs. He's only going against you know uh, guys in limited reps. He's, he's definitely an athletic freak. But if Mo Hurst can live up to the billing we all had for him, he could be one of the great late round picks of all time and maybe the second best late round pick from Michigan. You know, second to Tom Brady, of course, who went in sixth round in the 2000 draft. All right, folks. We have, uh, my name is James Yoder. I am the king of Michigan football media. Again, thank you for watching the program. Want to give out a shout out to our sponsor, which is Game Time. The Game Time ticketing app is the number one app for all your ticketing and your concert and show needs. Go on to chatsports.com slash tickets. It's going to redirect you right to the app store for iPhone or or for Android, whichever one you got, we're going to drop you right in there, and you're going to get up to 60% or more off your sports tickets. If you want to go to a Tigers game this year, wait till about 10 minutes before the game, go on the Game Time app. You're going to buy tickets for pennies on the dollar. You'll sit next to a guy. He paid 30 bucks. You paid like $7 for your tickets. So Game Time is bringing you the Michigan football report. I want to thank them for doing that. Want to talk about our YouTube channel. The Chat Sports YouTube channel is bringing you all the best coverage from around the world of NBA, college football, NFL, most importantly, the Michigan Football Report playlist on YouTube. If you type that URL in, 
chatsports.com slash YouTube Michigan. Drop you right onto the playlist. You can go ahead and bookmark it. You subscribe to Chat Sports, of course, and you will know every time we've got a program, whether it's this show or potentially some more we've got on tap for the 2018 season. Go ahead and subscribe today. Is Jim Harbaugh hosting a recruiting barbecue? The re barbecue at the Big House created by Rich Rod. Kind of continued on through Brady Hoke. Is Jim Harbaugh taking this recruiting effort a little more seriously? Hearing that July 18th, uh, of this year, uh, I'm sorry, July 28th, Jim Harbaugh will be hosting a barbecue at the Big House, giving this one three Harbaugh heads. Nothing's been officially announced, and I haven't talked to anybody inside the program yet to confirm it, but multiple people I talked to said July 28th, the weekend, they're going to make a big time show. All of the 2018, the incoming players will be there, all of the committed guys from 2019, and the top prospects that they are looking to secure for the Michigan football program 2019, 2020 classes will be in attendance. Maybe one of the biggest, you know, spectacles that Michigan has done uh, under Jim Harbaugh when it comes to recruiting. All right. Are Michigan's top recruiting target or top commitments for the 2019 class, are they seeing the recruiting rankings drop? Well, it's a people are talking. Rivals.com released their top 100, their new top 100 just this week. And both of Michigan's top 100 recruits have seen their rankings drop. So it's a two hard by heads. You know, people are talking. Rivals is talking. Both guys dropped five spots on this one. Chris Hinton, who we know and love. I talk, you know, we, we, we engage a lot, him and I do, on Twitter. We're trying to get his younger brother to come to Michigan. Hope Hopefully his drop ranking won't uh, have any effect on that. And of course, Stephen Heron, who has been rumored for a long time to maybe be looking at Stanford, maybe a guy who would decommit from Michigan at one time was listed as a five-star recruit as an underclassman. Could he be somebody uh, that that uh, you know is he going to continue to drop? Really, since uh, about the middle of his, about the end of his sophomore year in high school, we've seen his ranking go down and down. Now he's you know somewhere outside the top 70. So Hinton and Heron. Both their rankings dropped in rivals, about five, six spots each. But nevertheless, 24-7 hasn't ranked, released their rankings lately. ESPN hasn't updated their rankings lately. So those guys have their senior seasons. But rankings don't mean anything in the grand scheme of things, folks. But rivals did drop guy, both guys five spots. People are talking on that one. Rivals.com, hey, they don't love your recruits, so stick with the Michigan football report. I'm giving all the guys five star. All right, rumor number nine. This is the most uh, – we're, we're leaving you with the big two is what I'm calling these ones. I really like these. Uh, these are just interesting rumors. I am pounding the phones, texting, uh, DMing people left and right to get you to four Harbaugh heads on this one. Three Harbaugh heads here. Scholarship players have not been invited to the Michigan football fall camp, which starts the first week of August, the official NCAA. We're not talking about these optional workouts in the summer. So here is what happened. After spring practice, Michigan's football coach, football uh, staff, ranked all the players 0 to 110. They only have a limited amount of players you can invite to fall camp. Any guys, uh, not including the 2018 recruits who were automatically included in that, who were not in the 110 that were scholarship players, have not been invited to Michigan's football camp, which means they won't be able to join the team as walk-ons till week one after the Notre Dame game. This is pretty amazing to me that this is going down. Try Trying to confirm it for you, I've got as three Harbaugh heads, but when we hear the names, and I don't really have the exact names yet, I'm really trying hard for you guys to find out who these players are. If we find out the names, I think the writing on the wall, and what I have heard is this is a processing tactic by Jim Harbaugh, which is, hey, we gave you a scholarship, what do you want me to do here? We gave you a scholarship, and you're not as good as some of these walk-ons. You have to have as many as 25 or so, or 50, yeah, 25 walk-ons ahead of a scholarship player for them to not be in the 110. So this is a pretty big deal. Keep an eye out, it's my Twitter account, Facebook account, if this happens, you know these guys. The writing is on the wall. They are not going to probably uh, attend class this year at Michigan. You could see these guys as potential transfers this summer. All right. Want to give a big-time shout-out to Game Time once again. Toss it over to them to give you a little messaging. We'll be back in just one moment. Did you know that ticket prices can actually go down right before the game? That's where Game Time comes in. Game Time tracks ticket prices in real time from thousands of trusted sellers, then shows you all the best deals. So we can get tickets at the last minute for up to 60% off. Download Game Time now. Big shout out to GameTime, chatsports.com, slash tickets, iPhone, Android, the best way to get last minute sports and concert tickets for the lowest prices. Go to chatsports.com, slash tickets. 
biggest rumor of the week. I am giving it F-A-C-K, so you might as well you know, go to your local uh, bookie and put down some money on it if they'll let you. Shea Patterson, has he been told that he is the starting quarterback for the Michigan football team? I'm giving this an F-A-C-K. I've been on this for months, and maybe I've given it uh, you know, high ratings before. Michigan did not bring him in to compete for the job. They knew what they were getting in Shea Patterson. More importantly, they knew what they had with the guys on campus already. Shea Patterson left fall, left spring practice with this messaging from the staff. We have a Shea Patterson only playbook. You need to know these players. You need to work out with the wide receivers. You are the guy, no matter what, barring injury, coming into fall camp, you will be the starting quarterback. You will start for us on the road at Notre Dame. See, look, Shea Patterson's played at places like LSU, Alabama, either at home or on the road. Notre Dame in September is not going to be intimidating to him. It would be, you know, terrifying to maybe uh, Joe Milton. Uh, McCaffrey or Brandon Peters. So Shea Patterson is your starter, folks. That is an F-A-C-K. Go hit me in the mentions if you don't believe it. It is truth that's happening. It is going down. Shea Patterson, starting quarterback for Michigan for the 2018 season. My name is James Yoder, the king of Michigan football media. Follow me on Twitter, folks. You'll know when we'll go live. I'm putting out some really you know interesting nuggets and stats lately. Uh, a lot of people are enjoying those. So go ahead and follow me on Twitter. Uh, DM me if you want. I always reply back to the DMs. Michigan football mailbag has has uh, really taken off this week. I've gotten a you know, dozen or so people asking questions. We're going to roll that bad boy out to you next week. So hit me in the DMs. Want to take a look at a new segment, ladies and gentlemen. This is kind of, you know, following that Shea Patterson news that he will be the week one starting quarterback. I went back and looked at the last 34, 35, 33 years of Michigan football starting quarterbacks. Went back to 1985, which was Jim Harbaugh's second year as starting quarterback at the University of Michigan. Didn't really count 84 because Harbaugh was injured mid-year with that broken arm and really didn't get uh, I think the full weight of, uh, of his talents that year. So 1985 was the year Jim Harbaugh started at quarterback for Michigan. We're going to take a look at those records now. So take a look at this one right here. Jim Harbaugh, 85. Michigan comes in. This is really, if you look at these openers, this is the opening game and who the opening game starter was for that season. Ultimately, what their record was that year. And then we put in the uh, in the lower part what you know, how many touchdowns they had. Ironically, Jim Harbaugh, only 31 touchdowns at the University of Michigan. Came in third in the Heisman Trophy in 1986, throwing 10 passing touchdowns. Can you believe that, folks? That is insane. So Jim Harbaugh, 1986. Jim Harbaugh, 1985. 1986. Then you know, look at another sheet of of, uh, of Notre Dame. Six straight years. Seven out of eight Michigan faced Notre Dame in those six years. They went two and four, which is uh, not an ideal way to start a season. Six straight years. The end of the bow. Michael Taylor. Michael Taylor. Uh, Elvis Gerbach. Gerbach came in as a freshman in that '89 game, uh, so he really played three, you know, three, three out of four years against Notre Dame in his time at Michigan. Uh, you got Gerbach. 1992 was an interesting year. Gerbach come back for his senior season at the University of Michigan after. After, like his whole receiving crew of, you know, uh, of Desmond Howard and some others went on to the NFL after the 1991 season. 91 was was a heck of a game. You're going to see, I believe, this play come up right here. This is the famed, uh, not the famed catch. That is Scott Drysback in 1995, which is a big time play that I love. But Michigan starting quarterback since 1985. This is an interesting list. We're going to kind of roll through it here. We're going to get into the 90s. Maybe some of you watching will know a little bit more about these players and some of the guys in the late 80s. So Todd Collins came in in 90. 94, down year for Michigan, big time. Started off the year with a win at BC. Collins, you know, started uh, in 94 and, and 93. Got a lot of playing time in 92 when Gerback was hurt. Eight and four senior year was a disappointment. True for our retro freshman Scott Drysback started in 95, sophomore in 96. But as you see, Drysback was the opening day starter both those years as a fret, true retro freshman. Richard sophomore did not have the starting job by the end of the year. Actually, both years it was Brian Greasy who overtook him. Those were eight and four years, uh, eight nine and four, then an eight and four year. On to '97, everybody remembers Colorado, who was a, this is a top 15 matchup. Michigan, Colorado. Brian Greasy really set the tone for that year. Undefeated national title year. Michigan beat Colorado. I was at that game 27 to nothing on the day. '98, Michigan embarrassed the Tom Brady's first game at Notre Dame. Uh, really, is just an embarrassing day altogether. '99, Michigan comes back with another win against Notre Dame uh, Brady's senior year. Rolling on to the 2000s, you're going to see eight straight years of the same quarterback play. John Navarre, freshman, retro freshman John Navarre in 2000. People say, oh, what about Drew Henson? Drew Henson was the quarterback that year. Well, not so fast, my friend. People forget Drew Henson only started eight games in his entire University of Michigan career, missed the first three games with injury, came in in game number four against Illinois to lead Michigan from a come-from-behind victory 
after, uh, you know, frankly, Navarre had a great first game, really struggled on that road game against UCLA that Michigan lost and was struggling on the road at Illinois when Drew Henson came in and uh, and really saved the day for the University of Michigan. All right, let's keep this bad boy rolling through the 2000s. John Navarre, four straight years as your starter. Then, you know, this is the, the, the model of consistency from the mid-90s, once Greasy took over in 97, through 2007. Michigan really had as consistent of quarterback play. You knew who the quarterback was, the starter. You knew who the backup was. And there really wasn't. If, and if Ryan Mallett hadn't moved on after, you know, if Lloyd Carr hadn't retired and Ryan Mallett uh, wouldn't have left Michigan, you might have saw Mallett for another three years, but it continued. Henny, you know, 2007, lost to Appalachian State, a massively disappointment of a top five preseason team in 1994. Henny, the all-time leading passer in Michigan football history from a touchdown perspective. Nick Sheridan started that 2008 year, and of course, he was not successful. Stephen Three ultimately unseated him. True freshman Tate Forcier in 2009, unseated by his classmate, true sophomore in 2010, Denard Robinson, who took Michigan through the 2010 and then a very successful 2011 campaign, starting off with that big win against Western Michigan, 11-2 uh, Sugar Bowl team. Started off 2012 in Dallas. I was at that game. It was an absolute bloodbath. Denard Robinson, uh, you know, had no chance against that that Alabama football team in 2012. Uh, that was his last year. He actually didn't even finish the year as starter in 2012. We all remember Devin Gardner coming in about mid-year, and once uh, once uh, Shoelace was healthy, they actually had him playing running back. We all remember against Ohio State in 2012. Denard Robinson, your starting running back. Devin Gardner. 13, massively disappointing season after kind of beginning the year with a win against Central Michigan and then hosting Notre Dame under the lights in a big time win. 2014, probably the most absurd, disappointing, disastrous Michigan football season of my lifetime. We don't count 2008 because no one expected anything that year, even though 3-9 and nine was a tad ridiculous. Transfer quarterback, a one-year man, Jake Rudock came in 2015, lost at Utah in his opener. I think for what we expected versus, versus what we are given. I think Jake Rudock is probably uh, you know the best bang for your buck as a quarterback in Michigan football history. Only one year. It would have been great if he would have come in as a transfer and had two or three seasons under his belt. Last two seasons, 16 and 17, Wilton Spate got Michigan off hot at the beginning of the year. Big time 50 plus uh, point win against Hawaii in 2016 that you know got Michigan as high as number two in the country. 2017, Wilton Spate, big time win in game one against Florida in Dallas, Texas where Chat Sports Studio is. I I was at that game as well, but Will and Spate didn't even make it to midseason. John O'Corn, Brandon Peters, a disastrous year for the Michigan football team. Will and Spate, 22 career passing touchdowns in his time at Michigan. All right, that is your last, I believe, what was it, 33? Give me a number there back behind the camera, Brett. 33-ish years of Michigan football starting quarterbacks. It, you know, from my calculations, I was doing this math in my head as we went along there. Usually, Whoever starts has at least two years of starting quarterback. More than half the time, a guy gets multiple years starting quarterback. Shea Patterson has two years of starting in front of him, potentially, if he stays uh, for for his senior year, which would be the 2019 season. Are you following Chat Sports on YouTube? Are you following the Michigan Football Report? Well, you need to because it is the most watched Michigan football program on the planet Earth. People love the program. They love everything we do here at Chat Sports. Much better uh, bang for your buck entertainment value. And of course, we bring you the truth and not any of these uh, this fluff that the local guys are bringing you. So want to take it to a new segment, folks. This is uh, having a little fun from some stuff that was going on on Twitter two weeks back. So here's what went down on Twitter. This kind of thing happened where people were saying, uh, copy, paste, retweet this. Tell me who your favorite, you know, it was NBA player, NFL player. And then it started to get down to the team level. And I had a couple of people drop me in their mentions and say, want to hear from you, James T. Yoder on Twitter. So I put all my players out there. want to start with the offense today, folks. I want to talk about my favorite Michigan quarter players of all time at the 4-5 offensive position. So let's start at quarterback. A lot of guys to be considered, folks. Obviously, Ricky Leach before my time, a guy that you know my family members would talk about, great quarterback in the 70s for the University of Michigan, the original number seven, ultimately, a few people know this, went on to play professional baseball in the Major League Baseball, even though he was a four-year starter, the first player ever to start as a true freshman at quarterback for the University of Michigan. And of course, you've got Jim Harbaugh, uh, the Michigan's current head football coach, uh, the highest uh, finish in the Heisman Trophy for a Michigan quarterback of all time, number three in 1986. You get into the uh, more modern times, you start to get guys like, of course, uh, you know, not, some we're not even going to list here, but you've got 
Tom Brady. You've got guys like Drew Henson. You've got guys like Chad Haney. You even have uh, you know Denard Robinson. Some people be like Tate Forcier said if he had a better head in his shoulders, he could have been uh, the man at the University of Michigan, one of the great quarterbacks of all time. But I want to know from you guys, who's your favorite quarterback of all time? My favorite quarterback of all time. I feel like I was completely, uh, you know, just stolen his uh, his career from from George Steinbrenner. Drew Henson, I loved him as a recruit, loved him coming up in the Michigan football world. Thought actually he should have started in 1998 as a true freshman over Tom Brady. Actually supported Brady in 98, but that 2000 team was so stacked. Henson's injury really hurt that team from what I believe was a national title contending team. Three losses that year, total of seven points with Drew Henson. He only lost two of them. But Henson is my favorite quarterback of all time. So wish you to came back for a senior year in 2001. Ended up leaving Michigan May of 2001 to go play professional baseball for the New York Yankees. Let's move it on to running back, folks. I think this one is more that's concentrated from the early 90s to mid 2000s is where the best of the best. Some people say Jamie Morris. A lot of folks who were around in the 80s in their heyday of Michigan football will swear up and down Jamie Morris is the best Michigan football quarterback. You go further back, Ron, Rob Lytle, uh, Ron Johnson. Of course, you've got Wheatley. You've got Bianca Batuka. You've got the A-Train. You've got Mike Hart. I, I, I believe that there was a, a 12 to 13 year season where Michigan had some of the finest quarterback play in all of college football. Two, four four-year starters in the A-Train and Mike Hart from 97 to 07. There was a few gaps in there. 02. Uh, 03 season with Chris Perry, uh, Doak, Walker award, uh, Doak Walker Award winner, that people can make claims. So I don't know from you guys, who is your favorite Michigan quarterback of all time? I'm going to tell you who my favorite Michigan quarterback, I'm sorry, running back of all time is. I'm going to tell you who my favorite Michigan running back is right now. Mike Carr. I just love watching Mike Carr play, folks. I uh, I, I definitely believe that, uh, that he was as talented as any Michigan uh, player was. Wasn't the fastest guy, wasn't the strongest guy, but no one made plays like Mike Carr at the University of Michigan. Absolutely loved watching him play. Want to hear from you guys, though. Comment below YouTube, Facebook Live. You're watching the Michigan Football Report. Tell me who your favorite Michigan football running back of all time. How about wide receiver? This one is super easy for me. You know, we break it down to just a few players. Braylon Edwards is the guy who I think epitomes the modern-day Michigan football quarterback. He, he was a wide receiver under two uh, different, you know, wide receiver, uh, wide receiver under two different quarterbacks. Of course, he came in, uh, came up with uh, with John Navarre in 03 and 02, 03, 2004. Took a Michigan team that had a true freshman quarterback, a true freshman running back, and Henny and Mike Hart to you know to a, a Big Ten championship. Went out to the Rose Bowl, lost by one point to Texas. Mario Manningham, big-time player. David Terrell. So I want to know from you guys. I think it's pretty obvious who mine is. If you're going back you know, to the 80s, late 70s, early 80s, you're going to say Anthony Carter, Desmond Howard. There are so many guys to choose from. You can even throw in a Marquise Walker there if you want to get crazy from it. Best wide receiver, you know, my favorite wide receiver all time, Braylon Edwards, the, the man who had to earn the number one in the 2003 and 2004 season for the University of Michigan. So go ahead and put it in comments who your favorite wide receiver is of all time. Where are we going to next? Tight end. This one was an easy one for me. You've got Jake Butt, you know, coming more recently. You've got Benny Japru who won some uh, so some Big Ten uh, tight end uh, awards. I got to go back to 1997, though, folks. Jeremy Tuman. This play right here won Michigan's maybe their toughest. Uh, oh, sorry, not that game. Uh, Jeremy Tuman won. Maybe one of Michigan's uh, uh, toughest games that year against Iowa where they were down 10 points late in the second half. He scored the game-winning touchdown. A lot of people are going to say Jake Butt as the guy. He's the only Michigan tight end to really get that national acclaim of All-American Jake Butt was just in the last couple of years, 2015-16, under Coach Jim Harbaugh. But for me, it's Jeremy Tuman because of what he was able to do at the University of Michigan that led them to a national title where they had almost no passing game that year. Ty Streets is the leading wide receiver. Uh, but Greasy was not letting the, the score boards up through the air. Jeremy Tuman on that you know, naked bootleg, fake handoff left, going right was really the guy I love watching play. So go ahead and hit me in comments. Jeremy Tuman, my favorite Michigan football tight end of all time. All right, let's go to the big uglies. Up until about 2007 or so, Michigan was known as one of the best schools for producing offensive linemen, both in the college level, got guys in the pro. That kind of ended with Jake Long, although we did have Taylor Luan, but a lot of names to pick from. 
I am going to focus more recently. I think Jake Long for for what he did for the University of Michigan, you know, number one overall pick in uh, in the draft in the 2008 draft, a four-year starter for the University of Michigan. People forget his house burned down his freshman year. He almost was never able to play football again. That is the guy for me, Jake Long. I think Taylor Luan more recently is one who had you know All-American in an All Big Ten. Certainly is doing well in the NFL. Uh, is Taylor Luan for the Tennessee Titans? But Jake Long is the guy for me. I don't have the institutional memory of uh, you know offensive linemen in the 70s, in the 80s. I think it kind of starts to me in the mid to late 90s. That that uh, that line with Steve Hutchinson and some others, those guys who got drafted in the two, after the 2000 season, big time offensive line draft for Michigan in, in the 2001 NFL draft. That's kind of where my institutional knowledge starts for Michigan football when it comes to offensive linemen. So with that, tell me your favorite offensive lineman, and I will respond to you in comments, tell you what I've got going on. All right, folks, my name is James Yoder, the king of Michigan football media. Hit me on Twitter. Look us up on Facebook, Michigan Football Report by Chat Sports or Michigan Wolverines by Chat Sports, and we will connect with you there. It is Saturday. We are having all kinds of fun here, and we will see you next week.